Good afternoon, WBLM. Hello there. What's up? Steve Gorman. Yes, I thought this was Brian, is it not? It is Brian. What? I'm sorry to throw you off. <laughs> How are you, man? I am well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, too. There's a lot of sad people in Blimfield today, though, my friend. It happens. Yeah. I understand. Well, uh, last night I was uh, having dinner with our mutual friend Karen Durkot, and I had no idea any of this was going on, not an inkling. In fact, uh, I, I was completely blindsided by, by the whole event last night, so I, I'm really glad that I was sitting across from, from our friend Karen when we received the news. Um, yeah, well, Karen, Karen has been there from day one, and... It's very fitting because you've been there since about five minutes later on day one. So I'm, I'm glad to know that the two of you are together. And you, uh, I don't know where I read it, but you had the perfect quote for how you're feeling about this and uh, how everybody can relate to, to, to this quote. Do you, do you remember which quote I'm talking about? I, well, I said a lot. So I, I'm, I'm, well, let, let me help you with it. It was the one where you said, you know, when you know somebody's sick, you know, it, it's... Oh, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I was... Yeah, yeah, I know you, man. I mean, it's exactly how I felt, which is, I've obviously known this is the case for a long time, and you can watch somebody go through a terminal illness, and you know what's going to happen, but you still, the, the minute you walk in and see the casket, it's all, it's, it's, all that preparation and all that understanding goes out the window, and it's a different set of feelings. And uh, so it was a pretty, you know, it, it's just that thing of it moves beyond our own issue, and now it's everybody's. And, and I, you know, I'm not exactly like Mr. Spock when his home planet gets blown up, but I certainly feel for the, the sense, like you mentioned, within the, the community of fans, what that means to them. And it's a whole different level of sadness that, of course, up until now, I haven't experienced. And, and you and I don't need to get into to all the details of, of what happened. If, if people want to uh, read the statement from Rich, we've got that up at WBLM.com. But I know that you wanted to call in today and talk to the Black Crows fans in Portland, Maine, and, and let them know how much you appreciate them. Absolutely. We, um, you know, Portland was, as I said, you were there from day one. I mean, you personally and specifically and the blimp and portland was one of the first towns that we ever went to where I, I mean first things first the first time we ever went to portland maine was the first time i ever knew where portland maine was and <laughs> so to walk into a town and we got lost we couldn't even find it i mean that's a true story you know? what, what were you what were you like 23 years old at the time something I was like that like four and all i knew about portland maine was that it was north of boston right so that was it I, imagine my surprise when new hampshire turned up i mean i was like whoa <laughs> And we drove the van into town, and we couldn't find, we were going to play a place called T-Birds. Right. And we were op opening for a band called Junkyard, and I just remember it as the day UNLV and Duke played in the national, in the NCAA championship game, so that was like early April or late March of 90. And we pulled up next to a kid on the side of the road, and we said, hey man, do you know where Portland, I mean, do you know where T-Birds is? And he said, yeah, it's in Portland. And then I said, where the hell are we now? And we were in some other town. <laughs> oh, no. So, that's, yeah, and, and it was funny. He was like a 15-year-old stoner kid. He goes, I'll show you where it is. And he jumped in the van and drove us like 12 miles. And then we got, I said, well, how are you going to get home? He goes, ah, oh, that's cool. I wanted to come to Portland anyway. We never saw him again. <laughs> what a, what our, little, a, our stoner angel from Maine. Got us <laughs> yeah, of course. What a long, glorious ride we've had together from that junkyard show in April of 1990, and here we are nearly 25 years later, and I, I had no idea that those two shows that you did for us uh, celebrating our 40th anniversary in 2013 would be the, the last shows we'd ever see, so God damn it, I'm glad they kicked ass. You guys really gave it all those two nights, man, and, and we won't soon forget those nights. We had, a, you know, the, the tour in 13 was, was really good, and that we had a lot of great nights, and so, at the, you know, the, at, I mean, that's certainly a takeaway, which is we, we went out uh, on a really good note. And when that tour ended, I had no idea that was going to be the end of it either. But uh, at the same time, the way the band's 
been. It's, I mean, it's not like a staggering surprise, but you know what? At least we went out uh, on, on, a, on a good note with good shows, and I think everybody who saw the band that year really had, had a good time. And, uh, I mean, my disappointment is, first and foremost, just that we didn't have a chance to go out and say thanks again. You know, like, it would have been really nice in my mind to have been able to go out and tour for our 25th anniversary, which we had intended to do. And uh, I, that that's taken from me, but more importantly from, I know a lot of people would have liked to have come and seen the band, but they were there the whole time. And again, and, and, and you guys at the point in Portland were huge. And, and oh, getting back to my story, Portland was one of the first towns we ever went to where we could tell like, oh man, they know the record. I mean, we were an opening band in a club and we played eight or nine songs off the record and people were singing every song and we were like wow well you know that was a real big moment for us and portland always was a city that seemed to really embrace us and uh and it, and it, and it means the world first of all how in the hell are you still even there <laughs> what, what on earth who handcuffed you to that station oh that man Good job. Dude, I don't know. I, I grew up listening to this station. I've always been in love with this station, and I'm blessed to still be here. I I have no idea why, why I've been able to be here for 27 years, but uh, I guess uh, folks still want me around, and, and I, I have a lot of gratitude for that. And, I, I, and thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to talk to your friends in Portland, Maine, and, and let them know how much you love them. Well, uh, I'm... I'm happy to do so it's a real it's you know it's not been a it's been nothing short of a privilege and and it, and it feels and it, you know one good thing about this officially being done is i really do i think and i i would imagine the other guys do but i know i really do now just see it from uh, a perspective of of how wonderful those things are and and the, the relationships we've built over the years and how much that means to, to so many people you know, if you're thinking you're going to go back there next year, there's a, a subconscious level of, I mean, you just don't think about it. You take everything for granted because there's always going to be another trip. And now it's right. really easy to say, damn, man, Portland was always awesome. And they, 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 they jumped out of the gate right, you know, right at the top of the, of the hill and they rippled all the way down with us. And it's, it means an awful lot to me. Well, we look forward to seeing you in Portland again with uh, Trigger Hippie. That's going to happen soon, my friend. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, brother. Let's stay in touch. I'm always around. All right, man. Have a great weekend. Come, to Nash Come down to Nashville sometime. All right. We'll hang out. See you, bud. Peace.